This is a little device I found on eBay, which was marketed as a um, Mega 328 capacitor, resistor, transistor, diode, and triode tester. Uh, first obvious mistake is it's not a triode tester. Triodes are valves, and to test a valve you need a fairly sizable piece of kit attached to the mains, not a 9 volt battery like this. Um, but yeah, it's conceivable that it could be for the rest of the things described. Um, it's actually, it cost me $10, which including postage, which was like seven, six, seven euros all in. And it came from Hong Kong, so it's not bad. And there is actually a website for the people who designed it, which is very unusual for Chinese products. Um, if you can make that out. Uh, I'll put a link in the comments. Um, but the website's in Chinese. Uh, there's a specification sheet, but it's in Chinese. And of course, Google has done a sort of so-so job of um, uh, translating it. Uh, but yeah, apparently it tests pretty much every compo every sort of component out there, including MOSFETs, NPM, PMP transistors, uh, uh, pretty much every common component you can think of. Um, so let's see. Let's start off. Um, what I'm going to do is start off with a transistor. And in here I've got a BC... Uh, BC447, which is a fairly common, a very common transistor. Um, it's a category B, I believe, which has a multiplication factor of uh, 300. So if I just switch on, ah, you go 274. That's near enough. And so if I take that out and actually give it a test in this little thingy here, and to test uh, transistors, you press against these little plates here. So you need to make sure the legs are correctly spaced. And you press the button. And it identifies it correctly. MPM transistor shows you where the shows you a little nice little diagram here where your collector, your base and your emitter are. But HFE is 433. So it's overestimating the amplification factor oh, by a quarter. Uh, you know, it, it still identified the, the component correctly and showed a nice little diagram. Uh, if there's no part in there, it comes up with this message, no unknown or damaged part. It's not showing up very well on screen, is it? There we go. Uh, it doesn't appear to be very fussy about which which of these slots you put in the component into. So let's say if I take um, a resistor. I believe this to be a 6.24 kilo ohm resistor. So I'll put it into this first slot here. Oop, hope that's in. Press the button. Actually, it's all right. That's actually a Zener diode. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's, uh, it's getting a voltage drop of um, 767. So I'll make a note of that. But I just say, like, this is. Top rows one, bottom rows two, so it does ident correctly identify which direction it's biased. There's that resistor I had. Here it is. Switch it on. Six four two two, <clears throat> but it's actually a six two four zero. So that's not actually that bad, really. Um, that's fair. Uh, to be honest, in most circuits, no, that sort of being that far right wouldn't be that big a deal. But if I just uh, do a test with a good quality multimeter and see what it gives me, put the light on so you can see it better. It comes back at. Hold. Six two six point two nine. So this is a lot closer, a lot lot closer. Uh, and also these aren't very good quality resistors, so they are going to be out. You're never going to get uh, these were bought like in bulk, about like a thousand random resistors in the bag for two or three euros. So um, <clears throat> they're not the best quality resistors. So they're not going to be exactly on the uh, exactly on point, uh, but still. You know, there is an obvious difference between 
what this meter says, which is a decent quality unity, and what this little doohickey says. Uh, I have here a, um, this is a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. So I'll just change my, my uh, leads around. Switch this onto the capacitance setting here. Turn this one off. Switch on LC to what you have to do if you want to test for capacitance. You get a reading. Again, not very good component quality components. Bought on bulk, no, bought in bulk for bag for a couple of euros. I've come up with 84 microfarads, which is short. That's like it's, it's supposed to be 100 microfarads, but still, you know, for most circuits that aren't critical, this would this would do for in place of 100 microfarad. Uh, if I test it in the device, the tester, I might struggle to get the pins in here because they're different lengths, but not got it in. It comes back with 94, so it's about roughly 10 above what the the meter said. Um, so you think you're noticing a slight trend here, aren't you? Uh, it overestimates everything, um, which, you know, it depends how much of an issue that is, uh, depending on how much of an issue that is, depends on the circuit. Um, uh, like if you're actually selling stuff, that, you know, you're, or you're looking for long-term reliability, that you no, know, being anywhere between five to twenty percent out in terms of values is, is probably could be a bit of an issue. Uh, if you're mucking around and you're building just various little bits and pieces or stuff like your Arduino projects or whatever, it's probably not that big a deal. Um, the thing is, it's actually based on an 18 mega 328 chip. Uh, which is what the Arduino is based on. And I have a sneaking suspicion that this device was heavily inspired by Arduino. Uh, there, in the Arduino scene, there is actually uh, a lot of people who make meters. Uh, amp meters, volt meters, uh, various other kinds of meters. Uh, I'm, I do have amateur radio, I'm licensed, and uh, we use a device called a standing wave ratio meter. Uh, or an SWR bridge, as some people call it. Um, SWR is where you are using an antenna that isn't resonant on the frequency you're transmitting on. So, for example, uh, seven. if you're broadcasting on 7 megahertz, your ideal antenna length would be around 40 meters. There's actually a specific formula that tells you exactly what it is. But if you were to send out that signal onto an antenna designed for a higher frequency. The antenna would be physically shorter. And what you'd get is standing waves, which is the signal goes into the antenna and it bounces back. And that can damage your radio or it can uh, distort the signal you're putting out. So what you do is the SWR meter tells you what it is and it measures the output power directly into the antenna and it measures if there's any uh, power being returned. So it's effectively two power meters. They're actually coils wrapped around the antenna line and you get two needles and they um, they tell you what the ratio is between the two signals. And ideally you want one to one, that's full power dissipation. But if you get two to one, something's bouncing back. Um, so what people do is they build our SWR meters, digital ones out of uh, Arduinos. But one of the problems is accuracy. Uh, you tend to find that it's it has its sweet spot on a certain frequency or a certain power level. Or, and this applies not just to SWR meters, but to any sort of measurement, be it voltage or amps or whatever. Um, it'll measure, say, current between half an amp and 0.6 of an amp perfectly, but anything over and above that, above and below that, will be inaccurate. So what people do is they then start putting in resistors and modifying the circuit to compensate for that. And if you look at... Uh, so, and they might use relays to switch these uh, components in and out as, as and when needed. So what I suspect is that this is heavily inspired by Arduino. Uh, it's the same chip as an Arduino, although the circuitry doesn't give a lot away. But I, I just have this feeling that whoever designed this scene, all these metering projects on Arduino and tried to combine them into one and then come up with a custom hardware solution. Uh, the device, like I said, the device doesn't give away many secrets. The, cir the circuit here is very basic. There's the chip there, capacitor couple of surface mount resistors it doesn't really say a lot to be honest with you I'm sure there's something underneath the screen but I don't want to pull that off uh, 
so yeah would you use it for serious use probably not because at the end of the day i'd use the meters before i'd use this but if you've got children or you're trying to teach people about components it could be actually quite a nice little device and for the price you know seven eight euros ten dollars six seven pounds sterling you can't beat it and it also comes with these anchoring points here to uh, put into a case although i suspect that would be a bit of a challenge because though it would be very hard to um test transistors if if that was inside a case so um and supposedly according to the specifications uh you can upgrade the firmware but i can't find any ports or contacts to do that unless they're repurposing these transistor ports but and you need some sort of special um but you, you need to use it on special to activate it as a sort of com port um like i say the audience the the, the documentations in chinese and uh, Google has done a terrible job of translating it. Um, yeah, so yeah, the basic gist of it is, yes, it's a useful device. It's an interesting device. Great for people learning electronics. Uh, but it does overestimate everything. Um, capacitance, uh, the voltage drop on diodes, the resistance of the, the ohmic value of resistors, you name it. It's, it's always 5 to 10% above, sometimes more, of what the true value is. If you can live with that, it's a nice little device and it would be a great little gift for you know, someone learning electronics who just wants to quickly and easily identify what the component is they have. Uh, that being said, probably the next thing I'd do with this is possibly build a breakout from here. Um, so if they were and try and identify what the overestimation is. So let's say if resistors are consistently being overestimated by 10%, I could probably put in a resistor in series to lower uh, the resistance of the, the resistors being tested by 10%. So that might correct it. That might sort it out. Um, but yeah, so basically what it is, is it's kind of an Arduino-based device tester. And it's, yeah, I like it. I like it, even though it is inaccurate. So there you go.